Hi everyone, Pastor Steve here just wanting to let you know, in order to stay in touch during this time in which uh, we're dealing with the COVID, we have our various internet connections to keep, uh, keep us all connected. The website, gracechurchsac.com, the Facebook page, or you can even email us. At any rate, these are the ways that you can stay connected. Hope you enjoy the devotional or praise and worship, whatever you're about to enjoy. And uh, hope to, please stay safe. Good morning and welcome to today's devotion. We are in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, and as we have been recently, chapter 24 and 25 of Matthew are the various teachings that Jesus gives regarding not only the destruction of the temple, which actually took place in AD 70, but also the end of time and what that means. And so with starting with verse 14, we are reading another parable that Jesus gives regarding these events. So before we go into the parable today, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for your word because your word gives us life and hope and allows us to experience your kingdom, allows us to experience and become familiar with your voice. So we pray that you speak to us again and open our hearts as you so faithfully do by your spirit, that we may be able to hear your voice among all those that buy for our attention in this world and as such, learn to obey and follow all to your glory. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus says in verse 14, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey. He called his own servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one talent, depending on each one's ability. Then he went on a journey. Immediately, the man who had received five talents went, put them to work, and earned five more. In the same way, the man with two earned two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents approached, presented five more talents, and said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I've earned five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. The man with two talents also approached. He said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've earned two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. The man who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I know you. You're a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. His master replied to him, you evil, lazy servant. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers and I would have received my money back with interest when I returned. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw that good-for-nothing servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth." Well, this is a pretty powerful statement, and, or parable rather, and at the end of the parable, it sticks in your mind, the punishment that uh, be thrown out into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. One of the things to bear in mind as Jesus was teaching is that most of the people that he taught 
were uneducated, probably didn't read or write. It wasn't a very highly educated population. So when Jesus taught regarding the kingdom, he had to teach in a way that would stick in people's minds. Of course, they didn't have anything to write down. They didn't have a notepad. They didn't have recording devices, those kind of things. And so when he taught, he would have to teach in a way that it would sit in their mind and they could think about it and re go back to what he had to say and remember what he said and let that ruminate in their minds. And this parable is just that effective. It sits with you. It's easy to, to remember. And as you sit and contemplate about it, it begins to reveal the truth of the kingdom more and more. One of the powerful things about the scriptures and the ultimate hope of the scriptures is that starting with Genesis 1 26 we as human beings are intended and created and exist to reign to reign with God to reign under God's reign this is why God says in Genesis 1 26 let us make human beings in our image and in our likeness and let them have reign or let them rule or let them have dominion let them have say over the fish of the sea the birds of the air the livestock the wild animals and everything that crawls on the ground we are to reign with God and because of Genesis 3, our ability to reign has been very much curtailed. In fact, we are in rebellion to God. Though it is not our nature to live under God's reign, but rather to take matters into our own hands. And so this parable of the talents is a parable saying this is what reality the universal reality of existence is all about. That God created this place intending for human beings to reign with him. And now it appears as if, as if he has gone away. Although he is very present, when we look with our physical eyes, it appears as if he is far, far away, as is the person in this parable. And yet we are still to execute our God divine purpose of reigning with God, through God, for God, and the parable of the talents is an example of reigning with God. You get to have say over these talents. If you have five talents, you get to reign over them or have say over them as to what you're going to do with them. And the person that reigns best with God under God's reign is the person that God says, great, you get to reign with me through all of eternity. But for the person that does not uh, listen to God and actually thinks of God in a very destructive way, he is unable to reign with God in the end of the parable. In fact, his character is such that God can't trust him with anything. Remember what the servant said. The man who had received one talent also approached, and this is what he says. This is how he thinks about God. Master, I know you, he says, which is a very arrogant statement because he doesn't know his master if he thinks of him in this way. But he says to the master, Master, I know you. You're a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. In other words, you're unfair. You steal, you cheat, you're harsh. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. And here in this third servant, we see the attitude, the positioning, the nature of what we would call maybe not fallen man. I don't know if I like that term, although that's used quite frequently, but certainly infected, poison, tainted man that our attitude and the way we think about God is not accurate. It's not that we think of God as a loving God, but it's more natural for us to be afraid of God, to think that maybe God isn't fair. After all, we look around the world and what, we, what do we see that is a dominant thing? The rich get richer, the poor get poor, the injustices grow day by day. And if there is a God that is reigning over this world, and continues to move in this world, then where is he when so many people are suffering at the hands of so many other people? 
And this is the natural attitude of human beings. And this is the attitude that this servant has. But he's wrong because this is not God's attitude. And this is something that as Christians, we have to battle with time and time again, that part of our nature that um, really does believe that maybe God is not as good as what we think he is. Maybe he's not as good as what we want him to be. Maybe he is not listening to us as we think he is. This, these voices of doubt. But those voices are not true. And as we see in this parable, for those as we continue to live by God's grace, take what God has given to us, our reign, and place it under his reign with confidence we will experience a reward. The reward of reigning with God throughout all eternity. The reward of actually becoming and living and being the kind of people that we were destined to be from the beginning of our existence. My friends in Christ, let us not grow weary of doing good works. Let us not grow weary of seeking the kingdom. Let us not grow weary of discipleship, but trust in the goodness of God, knowing that our reward is sure. Thank you for joining in today. I hope that today's message and the scripture reading blessed you. And uh, I will see you next time. Until then, may the peace of God be yours always and forever. Amen. Take care.